when people travel and when people go to anime conventions, they tend to buy things. So here is a whole video of all the things I bought when I was at Anime Boston. Um, most of the things that I bought came from the Artist Alley. I just find that I prefer to shop there than in the dealer's room. The dealer's room can be a little overwhelming, especially at Anime Boston, because at Anime Boston the dealer's room is two rooms. Two massive rooms! There's like no way I could ever see all of it and figure out what I want to buy because there's just so many people. And I know a lot of, a lot of places have like t-shirts, a lot of places have DUDs, there's always multiple manga stands. But like I could buy DUDs and manga online and like the t-shirts, I just usually don't like very many of the t-shirts or they're like overpriced or I think they're overpriced. Although my friend Chris has pointed out it is usually a good idea to buy DVDs or manga at conventions because a lot of times they'll offer you like special de deals there like you buy multiples and they'll discount you where you can't really get that on Amazon. And I hadn't thought of that before so next time I go to a con I'll probably look into getting some DVDs or manga. So anyway, most of what I bought came from the Artist Alley. I did find this one stand that was selling like handmade like lotions and body sprays and like lip balms and I bought this. It is the Ocarina of Lime Body Spray. Body Splash. The people who made this, they're called Buttered Buns Studios, according to the label. I don't have a card for them, um, because I don't think they had them out or I would have took one. So this is just a body mist, and um, it's got a little Legend of Zelda Bunny Rabbit on it, and I like it because the name is punny, but the smell also is really refreshing and uh, bright and like awakening. Like I spritzed some on me. Yesterday morning when I was getting dressed, getting ready to come back to New Jersey, and it just helped me wake up a lot to smell that citrus. The next thing I bought, this is actually a birthday present for my friend Kelly. So I guess I can't post this until I give this to her, but I want to show it off anyway. This person, I do have a card for them. This was made by somebody named Megan Drynan. I'll post the information for all of these artsy people in the description, but it's a cup. And I walked up to her um, booth. And it was all like pottery and I was looking at it and she told me that all of the pottery she was selling was like thrown out of pottery wheel by hand and like painted by hand and everything. I forget if she said this was dishwasher safe or not but my friend Kelly doesn't have a dishwasher anyway so it doesn't matter. The color is great it's not the color of like a glass that Kelly already has and it's got like a cat pattern and Kelly likes cats so I was like this is a great birthday present for my friend. This I bought on Saturday. It's a little phone charm. It's in the shape of a cat stuck inside a popsicle. I thought it was really cute. And the artist is called Spoonful of Cats and their whole booth was like all cat themed jewelry and they had some really cute pillows, like throw pillows. This is, I guess, from people. There was multiple people there and it sounded like it was like multiple artists working together. Uh, but the website given on the card is storyofthedoor.com. There's only one person's name on it but I thought they were saying that both the artists had worked on this. And this is probably the most stereotypical like high school anime nerd thing that I bought. But my wallet is really big and I saw this wallet and I was like, I could totally see myself downsizing to this particular wallet more than some other small wallets that I've seen. I thought the picture was really pretty and they had all these like watercolor prints there. I don't know, I just thought it was really cute and pretty. So I bought it. Okay, so the next couple things are, um, prints. So people draw things and they'll create posters of them and then you can buy them. These prints came from the same person and I have misplaced the card. Okay, I can't remember so I'm gonna double check on the internet and add it as um, like text below who the artist is because like all of her art was great. Like hers was some of my favorite art that I saw in the artist alley. So this first print, I showed this to my younger brother, he said, is that from Pokemon? Because of Calcifer. This is from House Moving Castle, which is my um, absolute favorite Miyazaki movie. And I, don't know, I just thought it was really pretty. It's kind of like watercolor-ish. I just love the way watercolor looks. I don't know, I just really like this a lot, so I got it. And then I have a smaller print from the same artist. And I would have bought this one big, but they didn't have any big. I don't know if they had any big to start with, but this is a print um, of my favorite anime, Revolutionary Girl Utsuna. Um, I feel like I have never seen art for that anime at cons before. But yeah, I was just like, this is so great, it's so pretty. You have the castle and all the student council members and 
Anthe and Utna. Yeah, I don't know. This is I like literally I was flipping through the book she had on her table of this size prints and I turned the page to this and I literally gasped. Like I'm not even kidding. I was like, oh because I was like so surprised to see Utna art. I could say anything about the artist Sally. There's so much cool art. I wish there was more Wind Waker and more Utna and I would draw that myself if I could draw. But I can't. So like artists of the world, please draw that for me. Thanks. So there's just one more thing to talk about. This is probably my most expensive purchase, but it's also my favorite purchase, and it's something that I've wanted for a while since I saw it on the internet a year or two ago. And the first day of the con, I had been in the vendor hall for no longer than like 10 minutes, and I walk past the table. I usually don't buy figures, but I'll usually look and see them because they're cool to look at. So I bought my first figure. And it's of my girl Utna. I think this was the only one they had, so like I could have missed owning this figure because I said I would like to buy the Utna figure, and they just took it off the table and they gave me the one that was on the table. This cost me less than it would have cost me to buy this on the internet and ship it and import it to America. Uh, I think it cost me like a lot less than that. And I think at conventions, figures also are often sold for better prices than if you were to buy them on the internet from Japan. And for just a little over a hundred dollars, now she is mine. And I'm like so happy. I have to find a good place to display her because I don't know. I just really, I just really wanted this. And then I found it, and I was like, oh man, like. The struggles of life are worth it because now I own this figure. There's one thing that I forgot to mention that I realized as I got up and walked away and I caught sight of myself in the mirror and I knew I was going to forget it because I put it in my hair. It's this. It's a hair clip, but it's in the shape of the um, palpu fruit from Kingdom Hearts. I like accessories that I can wear that are like nerdy related, but that you don't know that they're nerdy unless you know that they're nerdy. So like I could wear it to work and there's 10 million sirens, but there we go. I remembered to include it. So that's it. That is everything I bought while I was in Boston. There's not much else to say. I just, I bought stuff and I showed it to you. Otherwise, all I have to say is thank you for watching. We'll be returning to non-convention videos soon. I'll see you next time. Peace out. I still really can't believe I found this. How do you like do a thumbnail for this? I just hold up like an empty wallet? <laughs> Today you've watched Crystal K. You can subscribe if you want, but if you don't, that's okay. One more thing.